Okay, now that the bow roller has been mounted, same with the windlass, uh, we're gonna move on to the electrical components of this windlass. And that starts with the solenoid. The solenoid, most people, most boat builders, they're gonna mount it to that first bulkhead behind the windlass. We're probably gonna move it over here and I'm gonna show you step by step how the solenoid, the, the 35 amp breaker, and the rocker switch are wired up. We'll put those to a perco switch for shutting off the power. You always wanna make sure you do that and then we'll work our way down to the power source of the battery. So now we're back. We're gonna, you're all gonna be basically a simulation of what's gonna be like in your boat. All of this is gonna be flush mount. I'll give you an example of what the flush mount looks like and panel mount looks like. So this is a panel mount where the wires go on the back side in case if say you had a panel inside your console or maybe outside exposed underneath your gunnel, this is gonna be mounted there and the, and the wires will be on the back side. This is a flush mount, which is what we're going to use and mostly use in the bilge area. So you, your terminals are going to be here on the outs, on the front side. So what we'll do is we'll mount everything here as a flush mount because it'll give you a good display of how the wire is supposed to be run inside your boat. First thing we'll do is we're going to start with our battery switch. Usually what I do is I just kind of find a location where I like to mount the battery switch. I like to use tape to bark it off. It kind of helps me kind of use it as a grid so I can start to put everything in a 90 degree up and down, left and right organization. Kind of keeps things nice and clean. So I'm going to use a quarter inch drill, start that off. So I got four lock nuts and washers and I'm going to mount this, secure this, but I'm just going to put them on. I'm not going to really tighten them because I'm going to remove this and we're going to do some wiring in a little bit. We're going to work our way north a little bit here and then basically turn the wiring to horizontal position and we're going to bring it in and into the bulkhead over here. Let's go next is your breaker switch. So what I'm looking for now is I just made a horizontal line here. I use my straight edge with a level on it. You can barely see it, but there's a, a line there. We're gonna use that as our reference to mount our breaker. We're gonna mount that right here at the bend. Now that these two holes have been mounted, just gonna fasten this to the wall. And we got our quarter 20s. We're gonna put that together now. So now your breaker is secured and mounted to the wall. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start looking for the location on your solenoid. Now the solenoid usually gets mounted in the anchor locker from the boat builder, but a lot of guys nowadays are starting, a boat builder is starting to put them under the console little more weather protected. It really doesn't matter. These are water resistant. They got a rubber gasket here. Not, you know, if you mount them in the, in the console or you mount them in the anchor locker, it's gonna be fine. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount this close to here because we're gonna drill a hole here into the anchor locker. And that hole is gonna bring the wires in from the windlass and we're gonna mount them to this solenoid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop it down a little bit lower so as the wires come down, they'll sink down, and the, and the same with these, they'll come down a little bit. And so we're gonna lower this, we're not gonna put it on the line, we're gonna just lower it a little bit. Let's put this with solenoid on now. Okay, so before I mount my solenoid, I'm gonna drill that hole so that the wires come in and go straight to the solenoid. Normally, I usually use a hole saw. You, I could just drill in a half inch hole, those two wires will fit through it, but we're just gonna use a hole saw. Give us some clearance in case we wanna add some more electrical wires through that bulkhead. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna unravel these wires.
uh, into that hole through the bulkhead. I'm just going to put the solenoid right here. Just do some two self tapping screws. I've already marked my spot. Now we have a three of the four components. I ran out of wire. I'm gonna put some power post from Blue Seas. And these little power posts are quarter 20s. And we're just gonna basically make a connection so you can put two eyeball, two eyes terminals and relay the power to the solenoid. So I'm gonna mount them in here and then I'll show you how to connect that to your solenoid. We have these two wires from the motor you actually only have 12 gauge wire and to these two terminals we're going to run six gauge all the way to our power source running the cable from from the windlass to the power source is probably one of the more difficult parts uh, depending on how your your boat is designed if it's got nice clean rigging tubes then it, it's not that big a deal but sometimes in a valve especially cutty cabins are really hard to run the wire down the side of the boat I'm about to do the, the crimping. Um, there's a couple tools. This is again six gauge, both in black and red. And there's two options for crimping. You got your crimping tool, a um, little bit more expensive than the other option. You can get this on Amazon for like $20. But basically, you're going to stick your crimp in there and then hammer hammer that on uh, to your wire and then you'll heat shrink it and I'll show you how it's done. Try to make sure that you put the shrink wrap on before you put the crimp because the eye is too big to put the put that around. So this is the crimping tool method if you decide to go this route. So as you can see, it's right there. And this is set to six, which is the amount, uh, you can change the, the keys on this thing to switch to number six. Number six is gonna give it the right amount of pressure around so that it doesn't slip off, but it doesn't damage the wire. I'm gonna put the heat shrink on and then we're gonna put the butane torch or a lighter if you have it. We had this dash panel put in next to our solenoid and I am going to install the console. This is our rocker switch. Um, it also has three pins. We're gonna show you how to wire this up. So let me get to it. Now that you've installed the windlass and the components, we're gonna walk you through all the wiring from start to finish. Stay tuned to the end of this video. I'm gonna show you all the materials and the tools that I use to do the installation of this wiring. 
Plus, I'm gonna show you tips and tricks on how to make it look like a professional install. All right, so one of the questions I get asked a lot on the phone is, what size wire do I need to run from your windlass to the power source? So that's all determined in your owner's manual. It's gonna come in the length of feet what we need to make sure is you understand is it's a full circuit. So that's just, for example, take a, a 25 foot boat. Normally from, from the bow to the transom is gonna be 25 feet. So you're gonna need it to run 50 foot circuit. So in this case, 34 to 60 feet is gonna indicate you need six gauge wire. This is exactly the wire I used for this installation. In this case, we've put uh, terminal blocks inside the anchor locker. Sometimes you'll see the solenoid up here. In this case, we've basically located it in the center console on the other side of this bulkhead. So for, for, for this scenario, we've mounted terminal blocks. And the reason we use terminal blocks is because the wire difference, because the windlass on this V700 comes with 12 gauge wire. And out of that, if you try to hook it up to the six gauge, for the recommendation of this windlass because of the length of the run, you cannot crimp, this This wire will not fit in the buck connector. So we went with terminals instead. Uh, that's how I basically ran these two wires to those posts and then ran them through the bulkhead. And now I'm gonna walk you through on the other side of the bulkhead and we'll walk you through all the way to the battery source. The red and black wires that are coming from the windlass are attached to the back two posts. It doesn't matter which post you attach them to. It just has to be the back two. The negative wire on the front left post goes directly to the battery. It bypasses the uh, breaker as well as the battery switch. The center post in the front is your positive. It will connect to your breaker on the auxiliary side. From the, at the breaker, you'll notice that the bottom left one, it says auxiliary. The top right is to your battery. So now that the wire is coming down from the breaker, uh, this breaker, this battery switch is an off one, two, all. For this case, we're just using one battery here. I've taken this off just to show you how the how it's wired. So the wire coming from your breaker is going to go to your common. This is your uh, center post. This is battery post number one and battery two. So if we had a second battery, this is where it go, but this is where it's gonna run right down to your positive of your um, battery. And now that the main circuit is completed, we're gonna walk you through how to connect the solenoid to the rocker switch. I've already removed the mounting screws, but I wanted to show you the back side of this, this rocker switch. This is how this, this rocker switch is wired. Most of the windless installation errors are caused because they think, uh, installers think that these three wires indicate uh, they need to go to these three pins and that's incorrect. What you need to do is make sure that these two outside ones do go to the outside of the solenoid, but the middle post must find a, a positive home, which is in the center post, that one, same wire that goes to the, uh, to the battery. This negative must get a, a little piggyback to the negative, so that's gonna ground your solenoid. If the windlass does operate in the wrong direction, all you have to do is switch this wire to this uh, side, uh, this bait connector and vice versa. Then it'll work properly for you. Or you can do it on this side of the, uh, the rocker switch, either way. Okay, let's get started. Here's the wire that I used to wire this windlass from the, from the power source to the windlass. This is marine grade solid tin copper wire. In this case, I use red and black, but you don't have to use both colors because that's usually being sold at 100 feet. So what, what I do is I sometimes I'll, I'll recommend a customer buy a 100 foot spool and then just on the positive side, put some put some electric tape to mark it. That'll save you some money from having to buy two 100 foot spools. On the wire going from your rocker switch to the solenoid, 
You're going to need a three conduit. Again, use tin copper. It's it's marine grade. So this one, you're only going to need 16 or 18 gauge wire to just trigger that solenoid. And these connectors, uh, depending on when you're connecting these to your battery cables, you're going to need tools to do that. But I just want to tell you that if you have a six gauge wire or an eight gauge wire, make sure that your lugs have the same size. So when it's crimped, you're not it's going to fit properly because if you crimp it on and it's the crimp the lug is too big it's going to be it'll loose and it'll slide right off so you got to make sure that your lug matches the gauge wire on the smaller wire we're going to use the spade connectors these spade connectors usually just you know strip off your wire put your uh, terminal and you're going to use your crimping tool to smash your connector to the wire for the smaller terminals we use this crimping tool on the larger uh, battery cable you have two options you can use a uh, crimping tool like this um, very uh, kind of expensive or you can do this for twenty dollars and you use this one and you put your terminal in here and you can hit it with a hammer and it'll smash it and then you just put some heat shrink and it's good to go to finish off the project what we need is to, to use tie wraps with eyes and um, stainless steel 3 16 uh, self-tapping screws okay so that the eye the terminal with the eye and then the self-tapping screw okay this is this one right here is five-eighths of an inch all right as promised earlier in our uh, video I just want to show you some tips and tricks on how to how I installed this to secure number one to secure that all your equipment is going to stay on the boat while you're running in, in some rougher seas as well as keeping things uniform so that it looks nice and aesthetically pleasing as well as easy to troubleshoot if there is an issue on your boat. Uh, first thing I'd like to do is just kind of give you uh, what I use to do the installation is basically a straight edge. I use this one with a level and just basically pencil the mark across going horizontally. Uh, once that's done, I mark off about nine inches and then we basically put our screw holes, our fasteners, our basically use stainless steel uh, 3 16 These are 10, number 10 screws and they're 5 8 inch long. So these are going to have a nice grip on the uh, fiberglass after you put a pilot hole and then you can keep things nice and uniform. Uh, as you can see also I put a tie wrap in between just to keep the wires uh, nice and, and, and connected and it just gives that again that professional look when you're finished. Also what I do is after I put a tie wrap on I use these special, these are tie wrap cutters, they're basically a flush end so that if you put your hands on any of this, there's no point on it so you're not going to get your knuckles or your fingers all cut up on the tie wraps because they do get sharp if you don't use this. Another thing that's going to save you some time is Never Seize. Never Seize is a, a product that you put on stainless steel, especially poor graded stainless steel has a, a very low cut quality. So on that, if yours is not a, like a nice C cut on the threads, you're gonna get a rough uh, stainless to stainless heat. And if it just galls a little bit, you're gonna have to cut that off. So one of the products that I like to use is Never Seize. This one's from Loctite, but there's other brands. And all you're gonna do is put a little bit of this silver stuff right on the threads and then thread those on but it will get sticky make sure that after you've done it those threads are clean this is usually um, I use this a lot on lock nuts especially lock nuts because those that Teflon and then in the nylon uh, the Teflon uh, inside that holds that nut on sometimes creates a little friction and that will cause it to gall so this this never sees will help that the last but not least thing is one of my favorite products is T9. T9, rust and corrosive protection, mainly for like the, the windless solenoid. I'll spray this on and it's gonna give you all that protection you're gonna need. It'll double the longevity of most of your electrical equipment. So I encourage you to use it on your breaker, your solenoid, uh, your motor, and anything else underneath the console, back of your battery switch, same thing. This stuff is amazing and I definitely recommend it.